Hi, welcome back! In this lecture, we are going to write our first CUDA program. I'm very excited about it. So, let's do it! In this lecture, we, we write our first program by following the CUDA workflow, implementing a few simple steps. First, we will create the CUDA code, starting from C code, and slightly modifying it. Second, we allocate memory on GPU and launch the kernel, providing the execution configuration. Third, we define kernels to be run on the GPU. And finally, we retrieve the trade ID from the index and dimension variables in the kernel. The problem I would like to solve is the following. I would like to calculate an array of distances from a reference point set to 0.5 to each of n points uniformly spaced between 0 and 1 along a line segment. In this exercise, there are two computations. First, I want to assign the position between 0 and 1 to each of the n initial points. We will call this operation scale operation. Second, I want to calculate the distance between each element of the array and a reference point set to 0.5. We will call this operation distance operation. These slides present a simple serial C code to perform the scale and distance operation. The code has a single loop that scales the loop index to create an input location and then computes and stores the distance from the reference location. We will see that the CUDA implementation will eliminate these four loops by using a block grid. These slides present a basic strategy to use CUDA to solve this problem. We have n points to process, so we will launch n threads, each one carrying out the scale and the distance operation in parallel. In CUDA, we provide the number of blocks and threads per blocks to set the total number of threads. Typically, the number of threads per blocks, TPB, is fixed to a multiple of 32. So we fix TPB and we calculate the number of blocks as n divided by TPB, as we want one thread per each grid point. Once the kernel is launched, each thread will compute the scale and distance operation on its own grid point and store it on the GPU memory as an element of the D underscore out array. The first step is to create a source file kernel.cu. In fact, CUDA calls have extension .cu. Once we have done that, we can copy and paste the content of uh, main.cpp, uh, the previous code, the code I, I show in the previous slides, and we copy and paste into kernel.cu. So the question is, is this a CUDA code? Yes, all the regular C codes are also CUDA codes that runs only on the CPU. As a second step, we start modifying kernel.cu. We can delete files include math.h because CUDA internal files already include math.h. We are going to insert stdio.h to enable printing the output. We also want to set the number of threads per block to 32 using uh, pound defined tpb32, as we said in the previous slide. A more fundamental modification is the elimination of the for loop in the C serial code. Instead of performing serially the scale and distance operation using the loop, we will calculate this operation in parallel using n threads. We copy the loop body outside the, 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 the main in a distance kernel function, comprising scale and distance functions. We then replace the, the four loops with the kernel with an execution configuration n over tpb and tpb. Note that we want to have a thread for each grid point. So the total number of threads should be n. We will need then to create an array on the GPU memory to store the results of scale and distance operation for each thread. To do that, we declare a pointer to the underscore out and provide the pointer to this pointer as the first argument of the CUDA malloc function that allocates memory on the GPU. Here, it's very easy to forget the ampersand in the first argument. Also note that uh, the size is providing a number of bytes. We have now three functions, and we need to use function type qualifiers to indicate where the function should be executed. Distance kernel is a kernel launched by the host to be run on the GPU. So the correct answer is global. Let's look at the scale function. 
In this case, we launch this kernel from the distance kernel. So the correct answer is device. What about the distance kernel? Which qualifier? Well, this is like the scale function, so it, it is again device. We work now in the kernel function. At this point, we want to associate one grid point to each thread. To calculate the thread ID number, we use the, the, the block ID, block ID x dot x, multiplied by the number of threads per block, block dim dot x, and we add the thread ID within the block, thread ID x dot x. We are ready now to put everything together. We start from the main function. We first allocate memory on the GPU with CUDA malloc and we launch n threads, dividing in n over TPB blocks to compute in parallel the distance kernel on the GPU. Each thread will execute distance kernel on a different green node. The distance kernel has the uh, global qualifier, while scale and distance have the device function type qualifier. Is anything missing? Yes, the CUDA device synchronized, otherwise we won't see any printing on this place when printing from the kernel. The code can be simply run on uh, Tecner by compiling it first with uh, MVCC, asking for a, a brief interactive section with slurm as alloc, and run it with slurm using uh, srun. The first point I want to mention is that kernels cannot return a value to the host. In addition, the kernel has access to the device memory, but ge generally not to the host memory. In fact, we miss the last part of the CUDA workflow, that is to move data from the GPU memory to the CPU memory. How do we do that? We will need to make a CUDA mem copy. A second point I want to raise is to pay attention to execution configuration. In our code, the kernel execution configuration is specified so that each block has TPB threads, and there are n over TPB blocks. We might have a problem if n is not a multiple of 32, let's say 65. In this case, we would get 65 divided by 32 equal to two blocks of 32 threads. The last entry in the array would not get computed because there is no thread with a corresponding index. How do we fix this? By rounding up the number of blocks. The simple trick is to change the number of blocks as 1 plus TPB minus 1 over TPB to ensure that the number of blocks is rounded up. One legitimate question you might have is how to choose TPB. In fact, the specific execution configuration that will produce the best performance involves both art and science. To choose some multiple of 32 is a reasonable choice, since it may up somehow with the number of CUDA cores in NSN. There are limits though. A single block cannot contain more than 1024 threads. For large problem, it is reasonable to test um, with uh, 128, 266 and 512 uh, threads per block. If you want to try a less experimental approach, in determining TPB, you might want to use the CUDA occup occupancy calculator to compute the multiprocessor occupancy of a GPU by a given CUDA kernel. The way to do that is to download an Excel file and fill it up, and the link is posted on this slide. So, in summary, we create our first program, Hurrah! We have done following a few simple steps. We are locating memory in GPU and define a launch kernels to, on the GPU. In the next lecture, we'll finish up uh, talking about uh, CUDA, uh, describing shared memory in GPUs, and CUDA atomics operation. We are done with this lecture and talk to you in a bit.